Well, good morning, everyone. Bill White is ringing our church bell this morning. William, thank you, as always, for your music. We have Ron on sound, and Erica is moderating this morning. Welcome. I'm Pastor Nat Bothwell. I'm the pastor here at Bethlehem Lutheran in Slater, Iowa, and you're watching our Sunday morning live stream on this Sunday, August 9th, 2020. A few announcements. This morning, our altar flowers are given to the glory of God by John and Martha Sheldahl. And today's arrangement uh, is special. John and Martha grew these flowers uh, themselves. They're, they're out of their garden. Uh, we thank you, Sheldahl family, for the flowers this morning and for all you do for this community of faith. This week was full of vacation Bible school. Uh, we spent some time in the wilderness with Moses and the Israelites, where we learned to, to trust God, and there was a, a, a move that went with those words, particularly trusting God in life's difficult and uncertain places. I want to thank Lori and Jess for their many hours of work in planning and adapting a conventional VBS curriculum to work with this live stream format. I also want to thank Pastor Padma and our friends at Slater Sheldahl UMC, uh, our Methodist friends, for their partnership in this year's effort. Uh, it was an off-off-Broadway production this year, but it was a lot of fun, and we did it. We have a short video this morning with some of those outtakes, and we'll be playing that for you just a little later. Finally, thank you to those who've already responded to the survey that went out last week. We've had great participation so far, more than 70 survey responses on a, on a total survey of 205. So that's a great response rate. Keep them coming. Uh, I'll be sharing those results in a few weeks. Uh, question eight was open-ended, and I'd like to share a few of those responses this morning. Again, this was an anonymous survey. Someone writes, thanks for all you're doing to keep us connected. I look forward to 9 a.m. Sunday mornings. There are some of us who wish we could figure out how to let you know we are watching the live service. So for us to know you're there, you need to be logged in to YouTube, not just a, a, a subscriber, but actually create a YouTube account and log in and YouTube will remember uh, your login when you revisit the site to watch next Sunday's service. If YouTube knows who's, who you are, then they'll allow the chat feature and we'll know exactly who's in the room. So be sure you're logged into YouTube and that's, that's one way uh, to let us know you're out there. If you have any trouble with that, call the office this week. We'll walk you through it. Next, someone asks, what are the normal business hours for pastor in office? Uh, <laughs> and what's normal anymore? The best answer as it relates to office hours or, or visiting hours, uh, one to five, Tuesday through Friday. And if those hours don't work for you, just call us and let us know and we'll set something up. Lori and I will always be here Tuesday through Friday. I typically work later on Thursday and Friday. Minna and I still only have daycare four days a week, so Fridays... I come in late, but I stay a little later. Uh, maybe a Thursday or Friday evening could work for you. Also, Sunday mornings. I'm here at 8. After the service, uh, there's always time. So if you'd like to stop by uh, for a visit on Sundays after, after the service, that's an option too. Uh, there are plenty of places in this, in this space where we can go and sit and be distanced and be safe and still talk. Finally, one last comment. Someone writes, I love the YouTube broadcast of church service. I would like it to continue when we are gathering in person again. We'd like that too. And so in May, it started looking like we might be doing this a while. And so the council uh, signed off on running some cable under the sanctuary floor. We, we had electricity put in under this first pew and so we invested in a, a media cart uh, we call it frank lovingly it looks a little like frankenstein 
Um, and so all this stuff has, has fallen into place and now we're in a position where we can <coughs> literally roll the cart down, plug in and go. Uh, and so we're expecting even when we are gathering again in person, there will be a window where not everyone is comfortable gathering in person. And so we'll be live streaming as we gather and we expect the live stream to continue. There'll be an abridged version of the service in this live stream format for those uh, who like this and for those who wish to gather in a more traditional setting, we'll have that too. So that, uh, bear with us, uh, that is the direction we think some of this may go. Again, Bethlehem, thank you for your feedback. Keep it coming. Welcome. Welcome Max and Elaine. Welcome uh, Craig and Patty. Welcome Cleverly family. Welcome Lori and your grandkids. Friends, today's service begins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Church, if you know these words, I invite you to say them with me, gracious God. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Church, in the name of Jesus Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. O God, our defender, storms rage all around us and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, we've established a rhythm now of sending out the Sunday Bulletin in PDF format by email on Friday afternoons. And typically, if there are any notes from the week, I include those notes in that email. Now, this week's lectionary readings are in that bulletin. And so if you would like to be added to that email list, if you're not currently receiving that bulletin, let us know. We can do that. That's an easy fix. Today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter. Thank you, Paul and Anne, for your reading this morning. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God.
You of little faith, Jesus says. I've always wrestled with that phrase wherever it appears. Peter jumps out of a perfectly good boat in the middle of a storm on the Sea of Galilee. And being sunk, and the verb here is passive voice, being sunk. Peter calls out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus is there. Reaching out and catching Peter immediately, God is there, revealed in the person of Jesus Christ, moving over the chaos as God so often does. Jesus reaches out, catching Peter, saving Peter, and saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The word translated doubt here can also mean waver, it can mean hesitate, Peter and the disciples clearly see Jesus approaching from a distance. However unexpected that is, however unlikely, they see him. And rather than feeling a sense of relief, or peace, they are only distressed further. They assume it's an apparition. They assume they're seeing things. They don't trust their eyes, and when Jesus calls out, they don't trust their ears. They don't trust their hearts. Instead of peace, the sight of Jesus approaching only disturbs them further. Jesus greets them. Relax, I'm right here. But even the familiar sound of his voice isn't enough, and Peter wavers. He hesitates and he begins to be sunk. You have little faith, Jesus says. Whatever made you waver, you saw it was me. What about that wasn't enough? I was looking at the Greek this week and I settled on a highly unauthorized translation of this text. It helps me hear this story in a new way. And so I'll share it this morning, whatever it's worth. You of little faith, the word oligopistos, that's the word that appears here, and it's it's actually a compounded form of two Greek words. Oligos means little or small in quantity, and pistos means faith. So you have this word that appears in the Greek, oligopistos, You of little faith is one translation, but this week for me, little believer fits two. Little believer, what is there to question? Little believer, of course it's me. I emailed an old professor from seminary this week And he shot back a reference to Little House on the Prairie. I had to look it up. But he asked, you mean like when Pa calls Laura half pint? Perhaps, he said. It wasn't a no. This translation may stick. I don't know. I welcome the whole notion, though, of being God's own half pint. I welcome the idea of being Christ's little believer. Often a little off-center, perhaps a little too brave for my own good. I welcome that identity as a learner, a friend, a follower, a believer with still more room to grow. You of little faith, that translation may work fine, but little believer fits in its own way too. What does it mean that you're God's half pint? <laughs> As I was reading this text this week, I remembered a day long ago when I was still a kid. I was still a half pint myself. And learning how to skate for the first time, this footage is from Monroe, Louisiana. 
sometime in the mid-70s. That's an orange jumpsuit that my dad is wearing. He's not on a work release program. Uh, that was the fashion in that day. He had one of every color. Uh, my dad helped me buy a belt loop lovingly, patiently, preserving and keeping me from all kinds of self-inflicted harm, even as I was ready to go, so ready to be on my way, or so I thought. Friends, you might see yourself as a person of little faith, and that may be true. But even those of us of little faith are held lovingly, patiently, by a creator who delights in all that belongs to God. You belong to God. And you have been redeemed by God in person, in the person of Jesus Christ. And you may see yourself as a person of little faith, Faith, but God sees all that is believing. Believing and a little reckless. Believing and perhaps a little impulsive, but believing and beloved. This God who approaches in the midst of life's storms, that God still calls and speaks and reaches out and goes the distance. Time and again, that God still saves. Little believer, let's pray. Gracious God, we are yours, and you remain faithful. You continue to show up in unexpected and remarkable ways. We thank you for the gift of fear that often keeps us safe. We thank you for the way you continue to draw near, calling us to life. Call us to trust. Thank you for another year of vacation Bible school. Thank you for your continued leading and your reaching and your saving in every uncertain place. We pray for Bishop elect Amy Current this week and her family. Be with your church, imperfect as it is, as we continue to grow in you. Send your peace now, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Bethlehem, we have uh, special music from Rose, Marcia, and Marcine. He's the master of the sea. 
Thank you again, Rose and Marcine and Marcia. People of Bethlehem, the peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you. Uh, let's share signs of that peace with one another this morning. Peace. Peace, Lori. Peace, Gary. Peace, Janet and Rich, and Greenwood family, the peace of Christ be with you, Barb and Craig. Well, you saw Paul and Anne earlier as they read today's gospel. Get ready to see them as you've never seen them before. As I mentioned earlier, it was a week of wilderness escape here at Bethlehem, and we've assembled a few highlights from those shenanigans. Anyone hungry? And to think, God put it there before we even asked. <laughs> well, why don't you sit down? I was just about to tell my new friends about a time God gave me strength. I don't have a chair to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Moses, we need Oh, to talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bethlehem, let us know if you have any specific prayer requests this week. Thank you once more to all who participated in our week in the wilderness this week. Kids, keep watching for God sightings. Thank you for sharing yours. Thank you for letting us see through your eyes. Uh, remember, God saves us so. That's right, trust God. Friends, keep sending in your surveys. We'll be reviewing those responses at the August Council meeting and we'll have a few more results to share in the weeks to come. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone.